Hello, my name is Kerry Arthur, and today we are going to take a look at even more Necron stuff. The preview continues, the march towards the Codex carries on, and, uh, well, today... We have the ancient dynasties of the Necrons, and we've got a bunch of information about the Silent King himself. We're going to start with the dynasties, because these are, these are more widespread, although I'm assuming everyone is going to want to buy the Silent King, because look at him. Mental. So uh, I apologise for the lateness of this video, by the way. I, I would have done this earlier today. Uh, I wasn't able to do it yesterday. I would have done it earlier today, but uh, instead I've just been playing Hades for like four hours. So, oh well. So, first up... The first dynasty, the dynasty of the Silent King himself, the Zarakon, have swiftly risen to preeminence since the return of the ancestral rule of the Necrons. Shocking that. It's almost like the big man comes back and suddenly his gang get all the attention. Who, who would have thought? The Zarakon dynasty wield potent artifacts and weaponry dating back to the zenith of the Necron Empire. So they have uncanny artifices. The Zarakon dynasty... Dynasty? Dynasty exhibit a deep rooted ability to fashion and maintain the finest war gear of any Necron dynasty. Stop saying dynasty. Enemy fire ricochets harmlessly from their magnificent android forms. Stupid sexy androids. While in return, every blast and blade stroke, the Zarakan level at their enemies is lethal in the extreme. So, each time a model with this code would lose a wound as a result of the mortal wound, roll 1d6, on a 5+, plus, that, mo that wound is not lost. Right, so that's a bit of feel no pain on top of your uh, reanimation protocols. Excellent. Each time a unit with this code is selected to shoot or fight, you can reroll one wound roll when making that unit's attacks. Cool. And when the protocol of the Undying Legions becomes active for your army, every unit in your army, excluding Dynastic Agent and Catan Shard units, I can't talk today, has this code. You can select both of that command protocol's directives instead of just one. Good lord, so they're not going to die ever, then. <laughs> if you if you want to be borderline borderline indestructible, Zarakan is your way forward. Zarakan? Zarakan? I'm just going to stick with the first one, it's fine. So, uh, choose this dynasty if you're looking to feel the ancestral dynasty of the Silent King. I'm really, honestly, I'm starting to lose track of the word dynasty already. Like, it feels like it's been too much. Too much of the word. <laughs> Admittedly, this article is about the dynasties of the Necrons, but still... Still, plus also I'm sure all you uh, US fellas, fellas and ladies are absolutely pulling your hair out listening to me pronounce it, what is to you, incorrectly. But to me, it is not. Language is weird. So yeah, their resistance to mortal wounds makes them especially effective against psyker heavy armies, while the handy rerolls when shooting or fighting ensure your deadliest weapons will strike true. Yeah, it's, I mean, they're pretty hardy. They're pretty hardy, they're not messing about. So, there's also the Sawtech Dynasty, which is the original colour scheme, as, you, uh, as I'm sure you will remember, recognise even. So, the largest and most aggressively expansionist dynasty is that of the Sawtech, ruled by the legendary pharaoh Imhotek the Stormlord, which is still one of the stupidest names in 40k. The Sawtech have long been considered the greatest of the Necron dynasties. I mean, obviously, that is not going to be true anymore, because the Silent King's back. They get relentless advance. Nothing can halt the inexorable march of the Sartak. These disdainful conquerors will stop at nothing to retake their ancient domain, obliterating any who dare defy them in a storm of death and destruction. Each time a morale test is taken for a unit with this code, you can reroll that test. Okay. I quite like that. Instead of following the normal rules of rapid-fire weapons, models with this code shooting rapid-fire weapons make double the number of attacks if the shooting model's target is within 18 inches. That, yeah, again, again, quite like that. Although... Mind you, I say that. Relentless advance, you could also easily apply it, like a feel-no-pain, to that too. The The name is, like, I, I don't know. That's one of those situations where you could easily attach proper hardy stuff to these lads. But I can see why they haven't. When the protocol of conquering tyrant becomes active for your army, and the same, same as last time it uh, has this code, you can select both of that command protocol's directives instead of just one. So I'm getting a theme here. If I remember correctly, there are six dynasties, and how many... I wonder if they're going to share that. I wonder if there's going to be another one that's got, like, when the protocol of something else becomes available, you'll be able to pick both instead of just one. I would assume so. So uh, choose this dynasty if you prefer to annihilate your enemies at medium range. Their extended rapid fire range and near immunity to morale test makes for an incredibly reliable metal backbone of Necron Warriors and Immortals. Yeah, I can see that. So, Mephrit... Once used as the executioners of worlds... <laughs> I do like that. 
the, the history is steeped in the blood of those who would dare oppose the might of the Necrons, and to face the Mephri in battle is to welcome annihilation at their hands. So they have solar fury. They have harnessed the wrath of captive stars to imbue into their weapons. It's so over the top. This raging solar energy confers immense raw power and can see through even the thickest armour with ease. Some of these may well be uh, the same or similar to old things that these different dynasties had, by the way. I don't have that older codex because I hadn't touched Necrons until the new stuff showed up. Um, because they basically just gave me all the things that I wanted. It's just one of those things, isn't it? They show up and they're like, here's new flayed ones that look great. Here's your old original Necron, Necron Wraiths back. Here's the monolith, but it's bigger and looks better. Like, they just took all the things I loved about the Necrons when I started playing them in third and went, here you go, you can have all of this back and more. And I don't have the self-control to deal with that. Anyway... Add 3 inch to the range characteristic of ranged weapons, excluding pistols. That makes sense. The models with this code are equipped with. Each time a model with this code makes a ranged attack that targets a unit with in half range. The armor pen is... A, oh, it's improved by one. That's fun. That's nice. And uh, when the protocol of Vengeful Stars becomes active... Yep. Every unit in your army has this code. You can select both of that command protocol's directors instead of just one. I, I figured we would see a, uh, a, a repeating of things here. Not a direct repeat, because it's a different protocol each time, but you get what I mean. A similar theme. So if you look close range, power, power, but wish you didn't have to get quite so close. <laughs> I mean, accurate, but for some reason funny. That, to that end, Necron Warriors equipped with the Ghost Reapers will prove especially devastating with the uh, Mephrit's improvements to both range and armor pen. Then we have the Novak Diet Dynasty. Oh, God, I'm so fed of saying... I don't want to say the word dynasty anymore. It's making me lose the ability to talk. To witness the fury of the Neuvok in battle is to see blood soaked fury made manifest. Their methods are more akin to industrial slaughter. Well, these are the lads for me then. So, Awakened by Murder. <laughs> what a name. What a name. Killing it. The crimson hosts of the Novak remember well the sacred rites of blooding performed by their warriors in the ancient times. Their martial heritage awakens a spark of violent pride within its legions, lending power and ferocity to their attacks. Add one to charge rolls made for this unit with this code. Okay. <laughs> I can see where this is going. Each time a model with this code makes a melee attack, if that model's unit made a charge move, was charged, or performed a heroic intervention this turn, improve the armor pen of that attack by one. Yep. And uh, when the protocol of the Hungry Void becomes active for your army, again, quality name, if every unit has this code, you can select both that command protocols directly instead of just one. Of course, we don't know what these protocols are currently. Uh, there's a little bit of kind of like, it's it's teasing, isn't it? It's teasing. It's like, well, here's your thing. Here's what it does. But you don't know fully what it does. Hopefully, we'll get a bit of information on that before the end of the week. That'll be nice. But, I mean, awakened by murder. The murder trains are coming. Bit of a death clock for you there. Anyway, if you want to tear your opponents to pieces, <laughs> ahem, your opponent's army to pieces in close combat... Yeah, I mean, Scorpec destroys just anything close combat. Like a big old mess of flayed ones would be hilarious. I'd love it. I'd love it. I'd love a big mass of flayed ones getting in, ripping people apart. So there's also the Nefrak, and they bask in the light of the trinary stars of their crown world, absorbing their solar energies with which to fuel the dynasty's great works. They're in gilded bodies of living metagold. Oh dear. What a terrible name. A dazzling sight to behold, but one which is soon cut short by deadly volleys of brilliant light. So, they have translocation beams. The cryptex of this dynasty adapted Metagold to create what their pharaon calls the Golden Form. Their soldiery can utilise translocation beamer technology to transmute their bodies into living light in order to flicker across the battlefield. Okay, sure. It's getting a bit... It's getting a bit... It's getting a bit OTT now, lads. Come on. So models with this code have a 6 plus invulnerable save. Nice. Uh, each time a unit with this code advances, it can translocate. If it does, do not make an advance roll for it. Instead, until the end of the phase, add 6 inches to the move characteristic of models in that unit. If a unit translocates until the end of the turn, models in that unit cannot shoot. I quite like that. That's fun. That's fun. That's interesting. That's that's uh, Yeah, that's got some cool flavour to it. Each time even this code falls back or translocates until the end of the phase, models in that unit can move across models and terrain as if they were not there. I'm, I love it. I'm loving this. I'm loving it. 
that's that's quality. That just that's so it's so tasty. It's so fluffy. Oh, oh, that's fun. When the protocol of the sudden storm becomes active, you can select both of that command protocols directives instead of just one. So choose them if you like the idea of a notoriously tough army being even tougher. And who doesn't like the idea of instant translocation? I mean, I didn't even realise that translocation was something I was interested in, and then that just that's just cool. That is a that is a cool set of abilities. I like that. Then we have the Nihilak. They found their ancient territory was plundered, yet all was not lost, and the dynasty has such since regained much of its former power, aided immeasurably by prescience gleaned from the preserved head of the Ith Seer. <sighs> Sure. The <laughs> the Nihilac Rain on the Warpath. <laughs> the preserved head of the Ith Seer. Sh- yeah. Why not? Why not? Everyone needs a bit of preserved head every now and then. Don't. That's not. Ter- no. Like, well, let's just move on. Aggressively territorial. Regal and arrogant, the warriors of this proud dynasty will not give a single inch to their foes. They stand their ground defiantly, unleashing a formidably accurate hail of fire that cleanses the stain of the lesser races from their rightful lands. Units with this code have the objective, objective secured ability. I can't talk today, if or any day for that matter. If a model in such a unit already has this ability, that model counts as one additional model when determining control of an objective marker. I like that clarification. That's cool. That's that's a cool way of doing it. Each time an attack with an armor pen characteristic of one is allocated to a model with this code, if that model's unit is wholly within its controller's deployment zone, that attack has an armor pen characteristic of zero instead. Okay, cool. And uh, they with, they get Protocol of the Eternal Guardian becomes active. You can select both of the protocols directly instead of just one. What are the protocols, though? Tell me. Tell me. So if you want a significant edge in match play with widespread access to objective secured, that is the, those are the last few. Oh, this is Ruse. Uh, Ruse Necrons. I love them. They're so good. Yeah, Warhammer Community's Ruse. Yeah, <laughs> he's so good. Kit Bash is a... It's so good from him. So one of the many cool features of the new codex is that you can create your own dynastic code. So you've been painting up your gleaming phalanx in your own colour scheme. I like the way they said your own gleaming phalanx, but they've chosen the chosen <laughs> the chosen Ruse army, which in fairness is quality, but it's it it's not so much gleamy as uh as as like gritty and oily. Very much oily. Intentionally so, obviously. So, dynastic tradition. Immovable phalanx. Each time an attack with a damage characteristic of 1 is allocated to an infantry model with this code, unless that model's unit made a normal move, advanced or fell back this battle round, add 120 armor saving throws taken against that attack. That's cool. Again, nice and nice and thematic. Circumstances of awakening interplanetary invaders. So, vehicle units with this code are eligible to shoot in a turn in which they fell back, okay? But if they do, then until the end of the turn, each time a model in that unit makes a ranged attack, subtract one from that attack's hit roll. Vehicle models with this code do not suffer the penalty to hit rolls incurred for firing heavy weapons, while enemy units are within engagement range of their unit. Okay, cool. There's some good stuff in there. There's some good stuff. I I really do like that translocation one. In terms of relative strength, I'm not the person to ask, but I really like the flavour of that. That 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 gives like a that gives a really cool mental image, and I really like that. I have to admit, also, let's be honest, um, Movark are like they're the best. <laughs> Awakened by murder, I just want just want a mass army of flayed ones. That's all I want. It's not going to be it's not going to be financially feasible at the very least, but it would be quality. Now, let's take a quick look at the Silent King, the rules of the ruler. Uh, one side is inches, the other is centimetres. That's a terrible joke. So, anyway, let's uh, let's have a look at the actual the actual uh, rules for the lad. So, floating rocks of death. Let's start. What? Oh, yeah, okay. The, <laughs> just for a moment there, I completely forgot what that would be in reference to. And I had a real, like a real, what are you talking about moment. Let's start by looking at the two triarchal menis that float either side of Zarek's Dias of Dominion. The names are just... Okay, not only are they the sort of impressive monument that only the greatest rules would have, but they each contain an Annihilator Beam. So, 36-inch range, heavy 1, strength 12, AP minus 4, damage 6. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the name's accurate. You can't argue with that naming system. You can't argue with it. 
It says it's an Annihilator, and uh, Strength 12, AP minus 4, Damage 6. That's, it's definitely that. Right. I'd be interested to know what the uh, Ballista skill of those will be. I mean, I'm assuming they're controlled from the throne, and therefore, you know, they'll 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 be they'll have whatever ballistic skill the the throne has got, or the people on the throne have got. Hmm, be interesting to see. Council of War. One of the key lessons that the Silent King has learned over the long millennia is the importance of delegation. He used the Triarch to rule the Necron Tyrion. Now he's accompanied by the Pharaoh of the Stars and the Pharaoh of the Blades to aid in his devious schemes. In game, they act as inhuman shields, protecting their king while also providing the rest of your army two handy aura effects. So the Pharaoh of the Stars gives you, well, a friendly Necron's core unit or Triarch Praetorian's unit is within six inches of Zarek. Each time a model in that unit makes a ranged attack, you can reroll the hit roll. And the other one is exactly the same range, and it's if they make a melee attack, you can reroll the wound roll. Okay, cool. So whether you want to have him sit back and assist in shooting, and also shoot himself, well, not shoot himself, but shoot other people, he does the shots, you know what I mean? Either way, works pretty well. I say that, it depends on the range of anything else, although with the two triarchal men ears on, on, on the go, probably sitting back a little bit is fine. Keep your immortals close early in the battle to make the most of the shooting rerolls, and then make sure your lich guard are nearby as you approach the enemy to really take advantage of the me melee rerolls. Yeah, you always are incredibly handy. Okay, hail to the. Oh wait, they also affect triarch units. Nice. Okay, hail to the king. So with nine wounds remaining, he's got movement eight, weapon skill and ballistic skill two, strength five, toughness seven, and sixteen wounds, six attacks. Leadership 10 and a 3 plus save. And then that goes to 6 inch movement and 4 attacks, then 4 inch movement and 2 attacks. The Triarchal Mene have, funnily enough, got a weapon skill of 6 because that's not what they're made for. Um, they're also, they're still strength 5, toughness 7 though. 5 wounds each on them, 1 attack, but they do have 2 plus ballistic skill. So, actually, that's kind of, I was kind of thinking maybe they would make those less shooty. But I suppose they are more part of the throne than they might originally appear, even if they are sort of separate. He also comes with a range of rules and abilities that would fill up the inside of a monolith for you to write them out in ancient Necron glyphs. Sure. Armed with the Scepter of Eternal Glory, the Sion King can dominate both the shooting and combat phases. So, range 24 inches, assault 3, strength 8, AP minus 3, damage 2. Pretty good. And then the melee version is strength plus 4. AP minus 3, damage 2. So that put it up to, what, 9 strength? Yeah, it would. Okay, nice. Nice! So yeah, doing 2 damage will come in especially handy against Space Marines, and that the majority of them have 2 wounds as standard. We also have Obeisance Generators. At the start of the fight phase, if there are any enemy units with engagement range of Sarek, then until the end of the phase, those units cannot fight until after all other eligible units from your army have done so. Okay, I mean, I like it, that's cool. It's definitely thematic. The question is, is it like, I mean, it says generators, so clearly it's like a, it's an effect that is pumped out from the throne. I just really like the idea of it being not a, not a technology thing, and more a, the Silent King going, ah, no, you, you wait. You wait. You go last. You let him take his turn for... He's like a parent. Feels awful familiar to me. He's like a parent talking to kids. No, no. No. They get to go first this time. You wait. That. But in the middle of a battlefield and talking to uh, genetically engineered super soldiers and Necrons. The generators is probably better, isn't it? Anyway. As evidenced by their creation of the prior Nexus, Necrons are not fans of psychers. Thanks to the Silent King's mastery of the mysterious substance known throughout the Imperium as Blackstone, he is able to shut down enemy psychers on the battlefield. Okay, Noctilith beacons, so he can attempt to deny one psychic powers if you're a psyker. And then there is Voice of the Triarch. Once per battle at the start of any battle round, if Sarek is on the battlefield, he can alter your command protocols. If he does, the command protocol that you did not assign to any battle rounds before the battle becomes active for your army for that battle round instead of the one that you assign to it. Essentially, Zarek is king and does what he likes. That's what that boils down to. And as such, it makes complete sense, and I like it. To be honest, he looks pretty fun. He does look pretty fun. There's some fun fun stuff in here. I like the fact that the uh, his orbiting surfboards are, in fact, massive beam weapons. That's cool. 
he seems suitably suitably dangerous. A good number of like aura abilities and kind of battlefield change abilities. Yeah, I quite like him. I quite like the lad. But then you, you know, you kind of hope that he would have that stuff because look at him. He needs to be a bit of a. He needs to be a bit awesome because he's the Silent King, and it would be crap if he wasn't. Yeah, there's some decent stuff in there. I do like the look of the Silent King. His uh, his stats look cool. His abilities look decent. And there's some cool dynasty stuff as well. I mean, you know that I like either the translocation or the murdering. Question is, is there anything that stuck out particularly to you? Is there anything that uh, you looked at and went, yeah, that's for my lads. That's for my gang. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. In the meantime, feel free to click all the things, Patreon video, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like. Don't click it if you don't want to. And as always, there's an affiliate link in the description for Element Games, which you can use to support the channel if you would like. I'll leave it entirely up to you. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.